Welcome back, everybody, to Ratchet and Clank. Good Hello. day. As we disguise ourselves from the planet destroyer, Sunshine actually has more science to talk about, and it's more appropriate we're in a science facility. <laughs> so, this is interesting. Crimson is playing as Quark currently. Yes, Captain Quark. He doesn't deserve that title. <laughs> You're right. Identification successful. Welcome. He's just Captain. Quark. Can you jump or is he Oh. I so So that entire time he was uh disguised. As Quark. <laughs> I, the, the, so, I have a bunch of notes, because I like to prepare things for, in case we run out of things to talk about. And when he started this, I was looking at my notes, trying to figure out something for this episode. So I thought, I thought he was actually playing as Quark. Uh, it's all you. Yeah. You turned around too fast, man. Well, now we know you can't jump without our transforming so. You look very heroic today. Heroic? <laughs> this is locked. I can't believe Nefarious just allowed Cork to still be on the ship, you know, perfectly, because I figured he would just kill him. But now, I miss Nefarious, he doesn't give a shit. Successful. Welcome, Captain. This is a stealth section. It's a mandatory stealth section, ladies and gentlemen. And you're going to like it whether you want to like it or not. Speaking of stealth sections, we had a stealth section in Yoshi's Crafter World. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting. Technically, we got two, but I think they took one. Is he gonna turn around or? He might have to kill him real quickly. Hmm. Get Mr. Joe ready. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's all you gotta do is kill. Him. So you don't have to stealth. You, just you need... can just zerg through it. You just have to actually just kill the robot. Zerg rush. Zerg rush. Who's ready for some more hacking? Oh wait, he's sneaking still. So yeah. Oops. All of you successful. Welcome, Captain. Oh boy. Oh, I see. You gotta jump real quick and then you gotta hit all of Yes. He has a back turn. Alright, it's just a waiting game, isn't it? Nice. That's right. It's me, Captain Clark. Howdy. Howdy. They and I'm guessing... You. They don't sense you. Yeah. Giddy up, little doggy. Uh, the switch is over there on that side. Yeah. So... Yeah, you might want to get several things out. Like, you know, Zircon. Zircon. <laughs> More, More Zircon. Ah, why? Why not? Why not another Zircon? Uh, uh, you have to transform the uh, first. You're looking smashing today. Indeed. 
Okay. Smashing. Okay, you have to change first, and then you can actually do it. Now! Quickly. You screwed up. You waited too long. I was like, dude, why'd you get the Predator launcher? That was the worst one to pick. That sanitation field is interesting, though. It basically kills any organism. Identification successful. Yeah, it's Captain. it's a laser field that is set to basically it's set to the point where it won't so get hot enough to melt right. the metal, but it'll kill any organics that it hits. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I think you can't touch anything. No, he's, there's a button over there, all the way over there, you have to protect. That's what I'm saying. He's yeah. trying to find a way to hide. Day for a planet smashing, am I right? Yo. Okay. Now when you change, hold triangle real quickly. Go, 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 you got this. Mr. Zircon. Mr. Zircon. I don't think you can change back and have weapons out, so. He's trying to find a weapon. Just get the rocket launch out, man. Yeah. But he's here to kill. Now go. Quickly, Zircon Jr. is out now. Stop them before they activate the sanitation field. You are so lucky that Proton Drop was maxed out. Otherwise, that would have never worked. The door is locked. We should find another way through. Yeah, no, let's go top side. That was awesome. Yay! Yeah, I think that's the gist of it. Is that you gotta sneak into a certain point, then you just gotta kill everything. Yeah. Uh, on this up. Look at the other. So that's what this was all about. I was wondering what this whole um, section was about because I was like, this gold bolts I can't reach without a clank. So can I gotta come back here? Oh, definitely give that shit. Too soon. We have been detected. You screwed up. I, I kind of saw it when you just bust out the proton drum. Yeah. Let me, let me try it. No, I just. Wait, I think you might have accidentally saved it ahead. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> he died and he got further. Okay. <laughs> I, I'll take that. If it works, it works. <laughs> it worked? I'm surprised it did. Yeah, you AFD about it, man. Ah! Oh, shit. Well, I actually had to come this way anyway. So he's about to switch, you need to kill him first. So, get him away from it, you have to wait for him. Get him away. Yeah. Hail, Chan and Drek! How is it going? Get your weapon of choice out first. And get something that actually was one shot kill. Like the war model. Because, hey, man, the war model is instant kill. So. 
I uh, sorry, I don't I don't want to distract Crimson, but I also want to go right ahead. Right. So another conveniently uh, thematic thing I have here in my little notes. The I'm trying to find the name of the university. I have it written down here. Ah, in uh, Carnegie Mellon University, in collab in collaboration with the University of Minnesota, they together have made a rather interesting breakthrough in the field of brain-controlled robotics. So basically, previously, brain-controlled robotics required very invasive implants, which require very expensive surgical procedures. Which is why they have never been done before. Widely used. Like they've been used, but it's uh, it carries a high risk to the patient. It's very expensive. So, but with with this, they are planning on using it in uh, several situations. Mainly, the first one they're going to be going for is using it in things like uh, car factories with those big robotic arms. Yeah, makes sense. Because those are dangerous. Mm -hmm. But a person being able to control that with their brain would be able to move it more gently around other people. And it's very interesting. But they are currently at the point where they can get it to accurately follow a cursor. Like a computer cursor. Which is... I mean, it's, it's the first step. Anyway, that would basically allow people to attach a device to themselves and be able to control any like heavy-duty robotic arm or anything like that, which would be a lot more smooth and efficient than just using the pre-programmed robotic movements. Robots are down. Come on. We better keep moving. Man, that's intense right there, man. And yeah, I understand why they don't do it. Because of um expensive and it's very risky. Yes. Which is understandable because I mean scientists some scientists just don't care about, you know, human ethics or whatnot. They just only care about the expenses, like, you yeah. know, yeah. I mean, all business. Well, that's people in general. Some people, yeah. But for the most part, um, yeah, a lot of people do care about that type of stuff. That they're like, no, we don't want to risk people getting hurt from it. Identification successful. Yeah, it's going to be very, very good when they can finish the sensing implement that basically detects human, it would probably be actually attached to the muscles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how most of those interfaces are actually designed. They're based around uh, muscular movements, and it, interce it intercepts the signal going to your muscle, and it translates that into movement for the robotic device. You're looking smashing today. Greetings. They just blow up. 
Mm -hmm. Well, we did our job. <laughs> oh boy, you have to actually go on the um, electric thing. Turn around real quick because there's another guy behind you. Oh boy, this is a pickle. Um, can we pause it because I believe we're at 15 now and uh, we really kind of don't want to push our luck all right. the last time. So we'll see you all next time. I don't know, Vito's saying. Hopefully we can all get together again. Goodbye.